God bless you. I'm a bit tall. <laughs> God is good, amen. To him be the glory, the honor, forever and ever, amen. Uh, so tonight, the title of my message is The Importance of Studying the Word. And uh, my main passage tonight comes from 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verses 16 and 17, and it says this. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, equipped for every good work. And um, I want to start off by quoting a couple important figures, uh, and specifically three U.S. presidents. And they said this, within the covers of the Bible are the answers for all the problems men face, said Ronald Reagan. Next quote, no educated man can afford to be ignorant of the Bible, Theodore Roosevelt. Finally, I believe the Bible is the best gift God has ever given to man, Abraham Lincoln. I think you can see something, that these important figures, they went through all these significant uh, events in their life. Abraham Lincoln, Civil War, Theodore Roosevelt, World War, Ronald Reagan, Cold War, but that's all right. But they all saw the importance of the word, the Bible. And so tonight... What I want you guys to get out of the study of the word is that it can help you to truly understand or truly learn of God. And my second point is that studying the word is a main factor of growth for Christians. And my final point for tonight will be studying the word helps you to be prepared for what God has for you. So I'm going to jump right into my first point. Studying the word is how you truly learn of God. Uh, I'm going to jump into John chapter 1, verse 1 and verse 14. And it says this, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with, God, was with God, and the Word was God. Jumping to verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwell among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. So I want to show you that studying the word is how you truly learn of God. And in these passages, we see that the word was with God and that he became flesh. And that person was Jesus. We know that Jesus is the truth, the light, and the way. He is the word. And so when reading the Bible, what I want you to see is that as you read it, God interacts with his people, Israel, in the Old Testament. And that from that, you can see how God acts, how he reacts to people, to what their decisions are. And you get to learn more of his characteristics as you read. And so reading the Bible is like a short autobiography of God, of who he is. Reading the timeline of, people, of his people, Israel, and how he makes a covenant with them, how he d punishes them and brings them back home because they are disobedient, you know. But um, As you see, God interacts, and you can pick up his characteristics as you read the Bible. Uh, il an illustration for this is recently I've been uh, taking my relationship with the Lord more seriously. And one of those aspects in my life is studying the Word. And I've come to find that Studying the Word is where I found my best experiences with God. It's great to be in communion with everyone, praying uh, in a prayer meeting and just being here with fellowship with one another. However, I find that studying the Word and spending time alone with God is where I best 
experience him and learn of him. And several nights ago, I just I decided, you know what, this is uh, my night off. My, mo my regular routine is I get up at 6, go to work here at 7, work until 4, come home, take a shower, eat, help my grandparents from 5 to 7. Usually four nights out of the week, I'm at church, 7 to 9, or somewhere else. And then 9, or when I get home, like 10 to 12 is my free time. So I'm like, you know what, I'm just going to see what God has in store for me. And throughout that night, I was just reading his word and just trying to figure out what can I learn about God. And as I was spending time with him, I learned that there's nothing you can trade in this world for his presence. And that just being with him, that night I had such a rush, a rush of excitement that I haven't felt in such a long time. And honestly, I can't wait to spend more time with God and experience what he's truly like. And so an application I have for you guys for studying the word to truly learn of God is very simple, but spend time. Be intentional about studying the word of God and see what he's like. Take notes of what you're reading. See how God reacts to the people in that chapter and what's going on and compare it to what you know of him. Did you learn something new? Did you believe in something wrong? Did the Bible contradict what you thought? And uh, so just be instinctual about what you're reading and figure out what God is truly like. And, on, and from that, we grow as Christians, moving into my second point. The, the studying of the word is a main factor of growth for Christians. And so I'm going to go into my main passage, which is 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3, verse 16. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. So in this part, I want to break down the four parts of this verse. Well, first of all, all breath is, or all scripture is inspired by God. And then I'm going to break down uh, the next four points in that verse, which is profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Excuse me. Um, so down to those four points uh, for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and for training in righteousness. Uh, there's a similarity between two words in there, uh, reproof and correction. And I just want to make a quick uh, distinction because I, I don't want anyone to get confused. Uh, reproof refers to an expression of disapproval or blame. So saying, I don't think that's right. Correction, on the other hand, is actually taking the step to make something right and to right that wrong. And so I'm going to jump into the first point, profitable for teaching. As we can see right now, I'm teaching. <laughs> so uh, I, hope this, uh, I hope you learn the importance of studying the word. Okay. Um, um, the reason why this is important, or th the reason why you should study the word for teaching especially, is you need to know what you're teaching from. Um, right now we're taking, uh, I'm taking a homiletics class with several individuals here, and we're, it's at Epic Bible College, and we're learning how to give messages. And there's three uh, sermons, three, three sermon types to give, which is topical, uh, textual, and expository. And I'm going to jump to the expository one. In the expository sermon, you have to give book context and immediate context. And the reason those are important, book context is where you uh, figure out what is going on in the book, what, what's the background story, what's the timeline, what's happening there. And an example, I'll do it right now, is uh, from Second Timothy, which I'm preaching from, is 
This is a letter from Paul. And he's writing it to Timothy, a disciple of his. And at the moment, he's in prison, and he thinks he's going to be executed and die soon. So he's writing this letter to Timothy to encourage him to continue the walk in faith. And then uh, immediate context, what you're actually preaching from. An example of that is right here we see Paul says to Timothy, and right before it says, remember who you've learned it from and where you learned it from. And it says all breath or all scripture is breathed out by God. So inspired by God, and it does, it's for teaching, for reproof, for correction, and such. And uh, he just wants to encourage Timothy to remember where you learned uh, the scriptures and rem remember that you can use this to edify yourself, to grow, and that this, the word, is going to prepare you for every good work that God has. Okay? And so that's why studying the word is important because you get to know what's fully going on and you can give an effective sermon. I'm going to move on to reproof. So reproof, we basically can use this to show disapproval. Say that uh, we see one of our friends and he's doing something he shouldn't be, you know, or um, he's uh, not behaving the way he should. And we can use that. Uh, we can use reproof. We know the commands in the commandments in the Bible, and we can tell what's right from wrong, and we can use this to edify or to show that, you know, this is not what you should be doing. And through the study of the word, you know what's right and wrong. Now on to correction, to make things right. So we can use the Bible to figure out how to correct our wrongs before God and before others. In first. John chapter 1, verses 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us of our sins and purify us of all unrighteousness. And then in Acts chapter 3, verse 19, it says, Repent, then turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord. So if you study the word, you can figure out how to come back before God pure. First, you need to confess your sins to God. Then you need to repent. And then you can go back to him. You can't go straight to him and expect to get whatever you want out of God. You have to be right. You have to be righteous and holy before God if you wish to interact with him. And so the Bible, studying it, will help you uh, find a ways to correct that. And finally, for training in righteousness. This one is simple. If you want to train to be righteous, study the word and do what it says. It's that simple. Um, in the same way, if you can't be the best at a sport if you don't train or practice or read the rules or know what's going on, right? So in the same manner, if you know what the Bible says, you can become righteous and through studying and through um, edifying yourself. And so through all these activities, teaching, reproof, correction, and training in righteousness, we grow as Christians. Studying the word will help us to understand all these four parts and will allow us to move forward. And finally, I'm going to move on to the second part of my main passage, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 17. That the man of God may be complete equipped for every good work. So I just showed you that scripture is breath from God and that all these things, through all these things, we can grow as Christians. And the reason why we should grow is so that we're prepared, so that we're ready for whenever God has a plan for us. And through studying the word, we can be prepared. We can be ready at any time. For those who want to preach, it says in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Reproof, rebuke, and encourage with every form of patient instruction. So if you want to preach or if you believe that you're, that's your calling, you need to be ready in season and out of season. Even when your day is going bad and like today, uh, today during work was not a good day. 
everything I was doing, Danny was like, no, don't do this. You're doing it wrong. Um, fix that. Redo that. And I'm about, I'm like, I'm about to take this hammer and destroy that piece of metal. <laughs> and uh, then we'll see what happens from there. No. no, that would be worse. That would just make me redo everything. So even with that anger, you still have to be ready. You have to come before God and ask for patience so that you can teach effectively. And hopefully I'm doing that tonight. Um, an illustration I have for this to being prepared for that studying the word helps you to be prepared is several days ago or a week ago my cousin came into town and uh, he's an older cousin of mine and I haven't seen him in a long time years and as I grew up I never saw him that much or hanged out because uh, he was just older and we just weren't in the same age group um, he's very outspoken he's very raw he doesn't like to beat around the bush, but he curses. And um, he doesn't think much of cursing. He doesn't think, he doesn't think it's that bad. And uh, a couple of nights ago, we were just hanging out with him, me and my uh, brother, Ben, and a couple of our cousins and brothers. And uh, we were just hanging out, talking. And I've noticed that he was, he likes to debate. And he likes to confront people on their wrongs. And so me and Benny, you know, we're like, okay. So we started debating with him, you know, like uh, getting on his case about cursing. And I misspoke, and I'm like, well, you shouldn't slander. And we can find that in the Bible it says not to slander. But he's like, okay, well, that's not slander. That's cursing. And then through more debating, Benny came up and read Ephesus uh, chapter 5, verse 4. Let there be no filthiness, nor foolish talk, nor crude joking, which are out of place, but instead, let there be thanksgiving. So, the nice thing about my cousin that he's older and he's more mature is that he didn't just brush it off, he took it to heart. He actually debated and he was like, okay, I see that you're right. And being prepared helps us to grow others, help us to reproof others when need be, and hopefully... Uh, I can also take that criticism. <laughs> um, but yeah, being prepared through the study of the word and knowing the word will help you debate or reproof or show people when they're doing what's right from wrong. Your part is not to correct it. Your part is just to show. All right? So you don't have to go further than that. You don't have to uh, start a war or anything like that. So. But yeah. Um, and an application is study the word. Be prepared at any time. Have a short, uh, short sermon, short testimony ready at all times. If you haven't used it yet, you get to use it next time. So um, always have one ready. It could be a couple minutes long, you know. Something simple, a testimony, something that happened to you, a praise report in a sense. So, um, yeah, always be ready. Uh, in conclusion, studying the word uh, can truly help you learn of God. As you study the word, you get to see what God is like, how he responds. And hopefully you learn something new as you study. Um, and also studying the word is a main factor of growth for Christians. Through studying the word, you can edify yourself. You can see where your downfalls are and where you need to grow. And finally, studying the word helps you to be prepared for when God wants to use you. When you know your word, you can speak life into other people's lives. And with that, I say God bless you all. And uh, for closing prayer, I would like to invite Vanessa to come up and to pray for us. If you would all please stand. Uh, bow our heads and close our eyes. Uh, God, we come before you. We thank you for everything that you've done for us, Lord. We just pray that you protect us as we come home, Lord, and that we will implement this message on our hearts, Lord, and that you will soften our hearts so we can surrender to you, Lord. We thank you, and we love you. In your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.